had a dollar for every time someone asked me how to use PowerPoint for e-learning, I would probably have enough money to buy a time machine and go back to invest in Microsoft. Seriously, I get this question so often that I'm tempted to put it on a t-shirt. But jokes aside, PowerPoint can do a lot more than people think. In this video, I will share my personal approach. The same process I've used for years to create online courses and training modules for my clients. Stick around until the end to learn all my go-to tips or grab the free PDF guide that walks you through the entire process, from your first slide to publishing your course online. You will find the link right below this video. I hope you've got your cup of tea and a few favorite snacks ready. Let's dive in. Before I share the framework I use to create courses in PowerPoint, let's address the obvious question. Why PowerPoint? Because every time I mention it in a learning context, someone raises an eyebrow like, wait, PowerPoint? We are still doing that? Yes, we are. And you would be surprised how many instructional designers, teachers, and L&D pros rely on it for their projects. First of all, everyone knows it. It's already in your computer, your subject matters expert's computer, and probably your learner's computer too. No setup, no learning curve, just open it and start building. That accessibility removes half the friction in collaboration. You can mock up an idea, share it instantly, and stakeholders can edit directly it instead of sending screenshots with comments in red. It's also perfect for storyboarding and prototyping. PowerPoint lets you see the whole course flow in front of you. You can lay out the sequence, test pacing, visualize transitions, and by the time you're done storyboarding, you already have the skeleton of your course. I've used it for years to get on the same page with clients before touching any authoring tool. It's fast, visual, and everyone understands what they're looking at. Then, there's the visual flexibility. You don't need to be a graphic designer or use Figma to make something look professional. PowerPoint gives you control over layout, colors, typography, and motion, enough to create clean, modern-looking content. With a few smart slide masters, you can build a consistent design system for your project. And let's not forget multimedia support. You can embed audio, video, screen recordings, hyperlinks, and even web objects all without leaving PowerPoint. For many small teams or solo IDs, that's a game changer. It means you can build, review, and deliver in one environment. It's not fancy, it's just a table, and that's what matters when you are under a deadline. And here's one I know you will relate to. PowerPoint is a gold mine for repurposing content. Every company has a pile of all decks sitting on some shared drive. Sales decks, onboarding presentations, compliance slides. So why reinvent the wheel? With a bit of cleanup and structure, those static slides can easily become engaging, trackable learning modules. That's real efficiency and ROI. So yeah, PowerPoint might not be shiny or new, but it's dependable, flexible, and still one of the fastest way to get your ideas out the ground. All right, I promise Microsoft isn't sponsoring this video. So let's stop hyping PowerPoint and actually use it. I will share the step-by-step -step plan I follow when creating learning content. If you would like to go through this process with me, take a minute to install the 14-day free trial of iSpring Suite. It's a complete offering toolkit that works right inside PowerPoint. Together, they make a powerhouse combo that outperforms a lot of other complex and, let's be real, expensive tools out there. Before you touch any program or offering tool, step back and look at the bigger picture. Ask yourself three questions. What's the real goal of this course? Is it to teach a skill, inspire reflection, build awareness, or help someone perform better at work? Who are your learners and what's their starting point? what motivates or frustrates them, and how much time or mental energy can they realistically invest in learning? How should this learning feel for them? Should it be quick and hands-on or more reflective and explanatory? 
Should it challenge them, inspire them, or just give them confidence in what they already know? A lot of projects keep this tab and end up fixing problems that could have been avoided this 10 minutes of clear thinking. If you're crystal clear on why this course needs to exist, you're already halfway there. Once the goals and audience are defined, start mapping the learning path. I love doing this right in PowerPoint because it's like a digital whiteboard where your ideas start to take shape. Use one slide per idea or learning moment, drop in quick notes for visuals or narration. Forget about design for now. Focus on logic, flow, and clarity. I like to think of this stage as sketching the slides. You're mapping how the learner's journey will flow, where they will get new information, where they will pause and think, where they will act. I always wish the slide sort of view is the easiest way to see the whole course flow at once. You will quickly spot if a section feels too long, too heavy, or out of order, and you can rearrange slides in seconds. Another tip, color code your slides by type. Blue for content, green for practice, yellow for reflection, and red for assessments. It keeps everything organized, especially if you are building a longer course or working with a team. By the time you finish this stage, you will already have a blueprint of your course. Now it's time to shape the visual structure of the course. Think of this as creating the environment where your learners will move through. Clear, consistent, and easy to follow. Start by setting up your slide master. Define your fonts, colors, and spacing once. It will save your hours later and keep everything consistent. Then. Decide how different types of information will appear. For example, how will you present definitions? In a pop-out box, a sidebar, or a contrasting color block? What will helpful tips or did you know notes look like? An icon with a color shape or a light call out box? How will you structure information on each slide? Text on the left, visuals on the right, or Alternating layouts for variety. Will every module title have a consistent header style or image background? Then you make these decisions early, your course becomes predictable. Learners can instantly recognize that's important and what's just supporting context. That's how you guide attention visually. It saves time later, avoiding designing chaos in production, supports instruction clarity, helps cognitive processing, and keeps your visual consistent with the brand. Then you're working with iSpring Suite, you've got an advantage. There's a huge content library inside this ready-made courses, templates, backgrounds, characters, and icons. You can use those to standardize your visuals quickly, especially for definitions, pop-ups, or scenario scenes. Okay, at this point, you can start assembling your course slide by slide adding real content, visuals, and supporting design elements. But if you stop here, it will still feel like a presentation, not a real online course. To make it truly engaging, we need one more ingredient – interactivity. I want to show you a few types of interactive content that I absolutely love creating with Icebring Suite. And honestly, I hope you try them too. Once you do, no one will ever guess you created it all in good old PowerPoint. Let's go through my top three favorites. Video lectures and screencasts. If you're teaching a process, uh, showing software, or explaining a concept that easier to see than explain this text, video is your best friend. This iSpring Suite you can record right inside PowerPoint. Capture your screen, webcam, or both, and sync them perfectly with your slides. You can add call-outs, cursor highlights, and captions to make your explanations even clearer. I often use videos for quick tutorials or onboarding demos. The editing tools inside iSpring are more than enough. You can trim, add transitions, or overlay text without limiting PowerPoint. Knowledge checks. Now quizzes. I know quizzes in PowerPoint doesn't sound like something to get excited about, but once you try them in iSpring Suite, you will see why I use them everywhere. You get 14 question types. 
drag and drop, hotspots, sequencing, Likert scales, and even matching. That means you can build checks that feel dynamic. Know those endless multiple choice tasks everyone skips through. What makes it genuinely fun is the control you get. You can build branching logic to personalize the learning paths. For example, sending someone to a refresher slide if they miss a key question, or allowing advanced learners to skip ahead. Feedback can appear in real time, transforming the quiz into a genuine learning experience rather than a silent score report. Here's the part I personally love. Section-based scoring. You can break one quiz into multiple topic sections, each with its own results. It's a simple way to spot gaps. You immediately see where learners are strong and there they need more work. I use quizzes for everything. Warm-ups, self-checks, recaps, final exams, you name it. The flexibility is wild. Just tweak the logic, timing, and feedback, and it fits any use case. Role-play simulations. And now my absolute favorite part simulations. If you are ever built soft skills or communication training, you know how tricky it is to make it feel real. This ice spring, I built branch dialogues that feel like real conversations. You set a scenario, add a character, and then script the learner's possible responses. Each choice leads to a different outcome. Success, a second chance, or a failure, this feedback. You can record voice lines and choose from dozens of character photos and backgrounds, so it looks like a real-world situation. I use them for coaching, customer service, compliance, leadership, and even onboarding. They are immersive, quick to build, and give learners something rare in online training, a safe place to practice. Honestly, that's what makes this feature addictive. Once you see learners negotiation, helping a virtual client, or handling a tricky scenario in your course, you will never want to go back to static slides. All right, that was a bit of an ice spring love letter, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I could honestly talk about ice spring all day, but let's get back to course creation. Step five. This is a part where I stop being the course creator and become the learner. So before I publish anything, I go through the entire course slide by slide as if I'm seeing it for the first time. I check. Does the pacing feel natural or do I need to trim a few seconds? Are the transitions smooth or do they pull attention away from the content? Is navigation intuitive? Do learners always know what to click next? Does every interaction work the way it's supposed to? I also watch how everything sounds. Sometimes I realize a section needs a pause or that the voiceover and animation aren't quite in sync. What's great about working in iSpring Suite is that I can test everything inside PowerPoint. Preview mode lets you experience the course exactly as your learners will. Quizzes, branching, role plays, timing, all in context. If something feels off, I can tweak it instantly and preview again, no exporting or reloading if required. Once it does, you are ready to publish. This iSpring suite, you can export your projects in the format it needs. If you're using an LMS, publish to SCORM, XAPI, CMA5, or AICC. If you're sharing your course online, export it to HTML5 so it runs smoothly in any browser. Or save it as a video if you're going for a lecture-style delivery. And if you just need to share it instantly with reviewers or clients, upload it directly to iSpring Cloud. Well, your course is tested, polished, and looks great. Now let's talk about the invisible traps, the little things that can sneak and even then you think everything's perfect. Trust me, I've made all the mistakes. Let's look at the things that can still go wrong. Not to scare you, but to help you avoid the most common course design mistakes. Walls of text. PowerPoint isn't a Word document. If you catch yourself copy-pasting paragraphs, stop and ask. Could this be a voiceover, a graphic, 
or a short role play scenario instead. No storyline. Even technical training needs a flow. A straightforward narrative helps learners connect the dots. Otherwise, it's just floating information. A simple situation action result structure can change how your course feels. Animation overload. If your course looked like it was made by someone who just discovered motion path, take a breath. Animation should guide attention. When weight is elegant, 12 spins are, well, dizzy. No learner focus. This one is a common trap. Sometimes we get so excited to share everything we know that we forget who's on the other side of the screen. Learners don't need all the information. They need the right information in the right order for the right reason. Log quality media. Learners notice everything. If your audio hisses and images are pixelated, engagement drops instantly. We are all used to polished visuals and crisp sound, so even minor flaws stand out. Just a friendly tip, always double check the quality of your media. It's one of those tiny things that make your course feel more professional. All right, that's it. You've officially made it from a blank PowerPoint slide to a complete online course. Hopefully this gave you a few ideas, maybe even some aha moments for your own courses. If you want to try everything I showed today, quizzes, simulations, narration, all of that, grab a free 14-day trial of iSpring Suite. It's a tool I use every day right inside PowerPoint, and honestly, it just makes the whole process faster and easier. I will link the link below. No pressure, just explore and see what you can create. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, or just drop a comment. I would love to hear how you use PowerPoint for e-learning. See you.